Want to learn Chinese? In this video, I interview Daniel Wang Badan, and he's an entrepreneur here in China, crushing it in the online English space. He'll share how he learned Mandarin. Coming up. Hi, my name is Kuejo. I've lived in China for 10 years, and I speak good Chinese. But he speaks better, so why don't you? <laughs> 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 王老师来了，你们惨了，下午谁再迟到我就记下来，直升机您要拖地，明天领导来检查，明天升旗要早点到。So why don't you tell us then what do you do and how has Chinese helped you? But first, share a little bit about how you learn. How I learned. So uh, I started learning Chinese in college and university. I was yeah. a Chinese major. Uh, before I started university, I didn't even know the word ni hao. I, I knew nothing. Wow. I like grew up watching some kung fu movies like a lot of other kids. But yeah, so I wanted to go into uni come out of university with uh, some sort of skill or something I can use in the real world. And I like languages. I had learned German before for about four years. I was actually an international business major with a Chinese minor. Hey, so I started that I started at one uh, university. I did one year in Nanjing in uh, 2008, my second year in university. And that was cool. Uh, I thought my Mandarin was really sweet then. <laughs> Everyone would like call me the dictionary because I, I memorized so many words. But now I look back at that and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know shit. I didn't know anything. Are we allowed to curse? Uh, I really thought my Mandarin was good at that point, but when I got to Nanjing, I was like, actually, no, it's not that good. So I kept memorizing a lot of words and uh, eventually made some like cool Chinese friends. How I actually learned it, though, I am a fan of the Anki method, and people might hear Anki and kind of cringe. I don't, I don't no, know. No, I used it. Uh, the jeez. From zero to five hundred, five hundred to a thousand, the two thousand most frequently used characters. Yep. Tell yeah. us then. So you use Anki. Yeah, I I was a I'm not, I don't use it as much anymore. I still do use it, but not nearly as much as I was doing back then. The summer before I went to Nanjing, I actually had like a a job in a in the lab, like a computer lab. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to watch and monitor. So I would literally just sit there for eight hours a day. Hopefully your boss is not watching this. Yeah, no, he didn't care. He was like, you just sit there, we'll do whatever you want. I was learning Arabic at the time, too. Oh, so I would spend a little bit of time learning Arabic, and then most of the time learning Mandarin. So I would just, like, you know, go to the HSK mm -hmm. character list, uh, add, add the character, uh, find a sentence for it, put it into Anki, and then memorize it. And I did that for eight hours a day. Okay, so you still started with the HSK list. Yeah. So useful vocabulary. You yeah. weren't learning anything that you couldn't use. I learned a lot of weird stuff. I learned everything. I was like, if I thought if I thought it was like a funny thing or like cool to learn, I would learn it. But my my inspiration came from the HSK. Okay. But sometimes I would like look up a word on. Um, at that time, I was using. I think it was Insaku. And they had, it's an, it was an older older dictionary. I've never really used Pleco, but Pleco is good. Uh, and I would look up a, a word, and it, it would lead me to another word. And I'd be like, oh, that's a good word, too. So then I'd learn that one. And that, Let's learn it. Yeah. Learn it and I would just like go through these example right. sentences and just learning and linking all these words together, which I think is a really good method because it, it leaves traces in your brain. Right, right. You're co connecting neurons. Yeah. Exactly. So when do you feel like Chinese actually really began to work for you? I think when I first started learning it, my teacher was, he was from Harbin. It was his first year teaching, and he was, just like, really excited about teaching us. Mm -hmm. So he, he brought a lot of that excitement to the class. And he really emphasized tones. I learned languages before. I kind of knew a little bit intuitively, like, pronunciation is really important. Right. If you screw your pronunciation up, uh, you're going to be screwed for the rest of it. Get that right. Yeah. So, guys, if, you, uh, like, if you're learning Mandarin, m all the kids in my class, there were two of us uh, out of, like, 30 kids. All those other people said that tones weren't important. They were like, Lao Shi, you know, I don't hear the tones, so they don't uh, exist. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, me and this one other girl were like, I think they are real. <laughs> it's not a conspiracy theory. So we ended up with much better Mandarin after yeah. just, like, half a year of studying because we focused on the tones and mastering them. And uh, I use John Pasden's like tone pair drills. So, shout out to John Pasden, Sino Splice. John Pasden is like he's a he's a legend. Uh, he's almost like as legendary as Dashan, kind of. But yeah, he he has these like tone pair drills that will. They're really simple. They are just basically like practicing first tone and second tone together. Uh uh, like that. 
And you just listen and you try to repeat. Which is important them. because tones aren't spoken in isolation. Exactly. You, know, you do have to string words together. Yeah. So, okay. So he'll have like, you know, first, second, or second, third, or third, third, and, and you just listen to them uh, and then you, you know, you imitate them. So I did a lot of that and I got into chatting with my, I made some like friends online on like italki. Uh, there was a website called My Happy Planet at that time. <laughs> <laughs> All these like little websites. I would go on there and just make friends and chat on MSN. So I'll, I did a lot oh, of typing. MSN? Yeah, man. That was a long time ago. That was... <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've, been, I've been learning Chinese for as long as you, I guess. I've been learning for 10 Two, years. 2008? Yeah. I started in 2002. I just took a break. Oh, wow. Okay. 2002 to 2004. They barely had internet yeah. here in China. It was still dial up then. <laughs> yeah. That was tough. You had to actually talk to people in real life. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's tough. So, so we yeah. met. When did we meet? It was where we meet. It was like uh, some event, right? It was uh, at some event that you organized because you oh, the, had a successful app and this, I had yeah. a pretend app <laughs> called Snap Say. I'll put a link there. But yeah. tell us about how you were using Chinese at that point mm. to make your app. And then you have to transition into what you're doing now mm -hmm. because he's blowing up here in China. So. I, I would say the most useful thing that I've done with my Chinese is like giving a uh, speech for investment. That's probably the most useful thing I've done. Okay. It's called in Chinese it's called lu yen. And it's kind of like giving a pitch, like giving a, a pitch for investment, lu yen. When you took on investors. Yeah. We had an app that we were doing. It in the end it didn't really work out. It was called Highway. But uh we actually had uh, we ran out of money with that app and we had to go out looking looking for investors and doing some lu yen. So I prepared my whole speech and I memorized it and then I just got up in Chinese in front of like the group uh, and I did a couple of those, and uh, eventually one of them was successful. So that was my first round for that project. Ended up, that one didn't do as well as we had expected, but we ended up pivoting and doing the one that I'm currently doing, which is Wang Ba Dan. And that is like, uh, in, in Chinese, it's called Zi Mei Ti. So it's like a self-media kind of thing, kind of what you're okay. doing too. Kind of, kind of what I'm doing on YouTube, yeah. but yeah. he's executing a lot better. So this is on WeChat. Yeah. And WeChat is WeChat, an Weibo. online messaging service here in China. If you live here, you probably already know Weixin, about it. Yeah. Weixin. So after we started pivoting, I started doing these like daily videos where I was teaching English. I've always, I mean, I've come to China and I do enjoy teaching people. And I, I enjoy like correcting their, their like inefficient ways of learning. So I enjoy like helping them fix that. So I was doing these daily videos. And eventually, um, kind of ran, not really, didn't really run out of ideas, but I was just like, all right, I'm lazy. I'm going to go to a, like a weekly. And when I started doing that, the video quality got better and better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then eventually these, um, the dictionary called Yo Dao, they were like, Hey, this guy is, uh, we, we actually had done a class on another platform, a paid class. And that one was really successful. So after, I think Yo Dao kind of saw that and they were like, Hey, let's get this guy. They found you. Yeah, they actually ended up contacting wow. us, and then we went to Beijing, met with them, and they're like, and we signed a contract to do to do online classes with them. And that's what we're doing now. Still doing some videos here and there, right. uh, but uh, my, most of my time right now is spent just doing the online classes. So, how many people you have following you? Uh, WeChat, we have two hundred and thirty thousand. Weibo, like a hundred and sixty. I think it's like 300,000 on Billy Billy. So a lot of people. So he's he's <laughs> successful, right? Now, here's here's the key. How much do you think knowing Mandarin actually helped yeah. you or helps you connect with all these people that follow you? In Chinese, I'm I guess I'm classified as like a Wang Hong, which uh, is like yeah. an, an internet celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Uh there aren't very many Wang Hong that I can think of that don't speak Mandarin. So I think if you want to do this kind of industry, you need to speak Mandarin. Yep. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be like amazing Mandarin. Just you need to be able to communicate in Mandarin and, and be interesting and funny. It sounds like you get to be in the culture a lot more than I do teaching by day. Really, I just talk to cab drivers, buy my food. <laughs> and that's when you go from like daily Mandarin to more native like then. Mm -hmm. Like my, I'm in, I know more of, of this like daily, just random uh, internet slang than yeah. in any I out there. I mean, sure. Your eye is not going to tell you this about I'm this like, matter. I'm like a, I'm like a Ling Ling Ho. Like I probably know just as much as, as Ling Ling Ho. I'm trying to keep up with them because that's wow. what my, my job is right now. You know, I need to be able to keep in touch with them. So that's, that's pretty cool. But I don't, I don't learn a lot of Cheng Yu. I don't learn a lot of poetry or anything. Like my, no. my Cheng Yu okay. side has definitely gotten worse. 
from when I was like at my peak learning. I knew a lot more Chung Yu then. And now I just know a lot more internet slang. You're going to learn something in Mandarin. What gives you the biggest bang for your buck? Because I, you know, they our teachers tell us you must learn Chung Yu, right? So <laughs> what do you feel like helps you? Because this channel really is about taking advantage of the day-to-day -day opportunities to connect with the people that you see. So what do yeah. you feel like helps you connect with the Chinese people around you? If like if you, I would, I mean, I'm a hundred percent gonna say learning these like Wang Lu Liu Xing Yu, these like internet things. Because if you're talking with young people. And like you don't know what Lehi means. Okay, that's the basic one. <laughs> Maybe Leiren or like yeah. is that old? Leiren, yeah, yeah, yeah Leiren. Okay. Or if Le you don't know what like Hentiao means, you're gonna have like a barrier between you and them. I would say if like it depends on if you wanna. If you're talking like, you know, 50, 60 year olds, maybe, sure, then sure. maybe you'd be learning a different category. But if your cohort is kind of like Jiu Ling Ho, Ling Ling Ho, Ba Ling Ho, then you need to learn these. Because the moment you say it, they'll be like, Wow, Lian Diao, Ni Zhu Jidao, Wow, Ni Zhu Jidao, Hao Li Hai. Connection. Yeah, right? exactly. Connection. They'll think your Mandarin is better than maybe it actually is just because you know some like buzzwords. And of course, if you're a businessman or you're working here as another professional, then you probably don't mm -hmm. need this language as much, yeah. but that's okay. Maybe because go heavy on the Chung Yu side. Look at another interview I do because I interview other businessmen and people just like you. The point is you can learn Mandarin yeah. and learn from us and speed up your Mandarin learning. Um, yeah. Thanks for interviewing. Yeah, man. My name's Kuejo, elementarychinese.com. Good, good, good study, study. Day, day, day up. up. Oh, you, you got JQ? This, have you met him? Yeah, yeah. Somebody introduced me to him. Yeah, JQ is pretty tomorrow. cool. He's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, he's really good. He's a phenomenal singer, so.